Hey YouTube, what is up? It is Simply YouTube here, and with me today I have the HP Elite 8000 desktop PC. This is a small form factor machine made by HP in late 2009 to early 2011, I believe. And this desktop was a part of their Elite systems. I do believe this is the very first Elite brand HP desktop they built, so um, definitely has a little bit of history. Um, they have plenty of these circulating around our school and many in our library still, so these are not obsolete machines by any means. I picked mine up on eBay for about a hundred bucks, so they are very cheap. Um, I did put in a lot of work and many upgrades into this machine though, so um, for what you're getting, it's a very solid business, internet browsing computer, provided you have an ethernet cable, and media computer, because most of them, if not all of them, come with uh, DVD players. So, let's get into this. On the front here, uh, we have our DVD ROM drive. I do believe this is System OEM, because uh, it has the HP logo all over it. Uh, here is the HP logo itself, uh, along with the power switch, with indicator lights for power and hard drive activity. Down here, um, it's a blank, and I believe you could actually throw in a floppy drive on this thing, so, yeah. Uh, there's four USB 2.0 ports on the front. One of them is occupied by my iPod cable. Over here, we have a microphone and headphone combo jack. Very nice for Skype and video calling. And a regular headphone jack. All right, flipping to the back, we have a wide variety of ports to use. That's very nice. We have a printer port, uh, two serial ports. That's very nice. Uh, Ethernet, six USB 2.0, eSATA, VGA, mouse and keyboard PS2 ports, uh, microphone in and audio out, as well as the plug for the power supply. And a very nice feature, you could actually attach a lock back here to keep people from opening up your PC. Now watch how easy it is to get into the inside. Grab this handle, pull, lift. That is true simplicity right there. And inside, you have access to all of the parts. And with the exception of the processor underneath the screwed in heat sink, pretty much everything is accessible by hand. You can just literally lift up anything and put it back. So it's very user friendly uh, for upgrades. Over here we have our DVD-ROM drive, um, of course our heat sink assembly with our front fan, um, two expansion ports down here, very nice, CMOS battery of course. Um, we have three sticks of RAM, uh, two two gigabytes and one four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. Underneath the power supply, you can't really see it, let me just pull it up here, we have a two terabyte Toshiba hard drive. So plenty of space, I installed that myself and it's been working great. Um, unfortunately, those Toshiba hard drives do have a high rate of failure, so uh, I'm going to start backing up my data. All right, so that is the inside, and I guess we might as well get it connecting and turning on. Okay, so the power went out. Uh, we have a thunderstorm. And so I've hooked this thing up to the living room generator, and hopefully this thing holds up. It's four hours of advertised operation um, on battery power, so... We'll see how that goes. Anyway, we have our uh, keyboard, mouse, ethernet, and our nice big screen monitor hooked up, as well as my iPod, because it's almost dead. So uh, let's get started. Let's see, this thing is turning on. This monitor will take a bit. There we go. So I set up a little power on password. It's one of the features in the BIOS, and this is really cool. It's just that bias sound. It's crazy cool, man. And listen how quiet this thing is. It's just like, wow. It's really convenient, too. If you're working, even while gaming on this thing, it will keep that very, very low, um, very low fan. Um, you can, of course, set it higher in the bias, which is also pretty nice. And that thing will go screaming, screaming fast. Um... So yeah, very nice features in the BIOS. Let's try to get some focus on here. All right. Welcome. So the boot time for that, I believe, is around 20 seconds. Maybe a little bit more, but I'm bad at keeping time, so you can probably tell me how much that was. Um, so here we are at the start screen. Of course, you already know what this is. We're going to go and find out specs of this computer. And I've already gone over them, but 
nice to have them all in one place. So here we are, we have that uh, 3 gigahertz Core 2 Duo processor, 8 gigs of RAM, 64-bit Windows 7, professional. So yeah, really nothing else. Um, I've already installed all the drivers and software updates for this, so really it's, it's up to its perfect condition. I'm sorry if the camera's shaking too. It's kind of hard holding this thing with one hand. All right, so just as a little test to see how well this processor can handle under load, I've installed Microsoft Office 2016, the whole thing. And I was thinking that we open all of the applications at the same time. So I'm gonna also put my rapid clicking skills to the test. Here we go. Access, Excel, OneNote, Outlook, PowerPoint, Publisher, Skype, and Word. And they are already opening up. All right, you're looking down here too, you'll know when they open up. So PowerPoint is open, Outlook is open, Publisher, Access, Word is still opening, there we go, Skype is starting up. Boy, I think that's it. Skype has yet to open up. There we go. So, again, I'm bad at keeping time. I think that was around 10 seconds, maybe 15, for all of that stuff to open. So, you can tell, you know, this Core 2 Duo processor ain't letting go just yet. And really, it's not obsolete by any means. You know, our school still has plenty of these computers lying around, and, you know, they have even worse Core 2 Duo 2.3 gigahertz processors or something like that. And they run AutoCAD 2016 amazingly well. And so, you know, imagine what this 3 gigahertz Core 2 Duo is capable of. It's perfect for business, you know, somebody who is on a budget and needs a computer that is great for business. This is my absolute number one recommendation. And you may see that I'm on Ethernet. You may be worried about that. Hey, you know, I, I need Wi-Fi. You can get a Wi-Fi card. What about the graphics? Because this has Intel integrated GMA 9... Mm, no, X4500 graphics. But somebody may want, you know, more powerful graphics. You can get a 2 gigabyte NVIDIA Quadro card, I believe, or something like that, and install it in this machine. So really, there are many upgrades, despite this being a small form factor. And I couldn't recommend this enough for any build or a person that just needs a good business computer. These things have tons of upgrades that you can put in there, as I've demonstrated with the RAM and the terabyte hard drive. It's all easy to get into, it's all easy to upgrade, and really, this is just a wonderful computer. It is the HP Elite 8000. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you like this video, comment if you have anything that you'd like to say, and have a good one.